Here's the kicker, Jason Myers, to get this one started. And off we go from Seattle. Taken at the goal line. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they will be led out by the youngster, the rookie, their QB. His ability to adjust on the fly is almost unmatched in the game right now because it leads to a couple of snaps per game where you just sit back and ask yourself, how did he pull that off? Opponents can practice and prepare each and every week all they want, but this guy, he is hard to corral. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Their first play from scrimmage is a pickup of 13. Good job there. Pretty simple. The hole was created. Runner just darted right through. Yeah, that's kind of play teams are looking for to have some success early in a ball game. If you're an offensive play caller, you mark that run down. Make sure you keep coming back to it throughout the game until they stop it. Williams now throwing on first down. He's got a man. That's Keenan Allen. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A Chicago first down there on a gain of 11. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. That's some strong running. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. From the 48-yard line, here's the second and five. Looking to throw. Williams to the right side, and he's got more complete. And that'll wind up moving the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the Seahawks' 39. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. And they run the option here on first and 10. And he probably should have given that one off as he's going to get hit and taken down behind the line. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Williams throw there complete to Allen. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. But give the rookie another one on this opening drive and a first down with it. A nice start, Charles, for the first-year passer. He's come out, made a few plays, nice plays to begin this contest. He certainly has. If he finishes off this drive with a touchdown pass, I vote we don't call him rookie anymore. We'll move him right to veteran and continue from there. They go play action here on first down. A quick throw there is incomplete. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Back to the running game with Swift. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. But if you're going to have a relay race, you're probably going to pick your backs and receivers to run it, but don't underestimate the conditioning of the offensive line. They're out there just dictating things, staying on the field, and keeping a long drive going. There they'll be in search of six yards here on third down. This is now the ninth play of the drive. Back to throw. Williams. Able to find the open man. That's complete. Touchdown, Bears. Tyler Scott from 17 yards out. And the Bears are on the board first here this afternoon. Those are the drives that prove a lot. You got a rookie quarterback, Charles. You're on the road, takes him down, throws the touchdown pass. And in a game like this, with, as you described, a rookie quarterback, the team usually says, okay, we got to take care of this guy. We got to protect him. But when he goes out and plays like this on the first drive on the road, he doesn't have to say, I'm here to be your leader. 
They just need to follow him. Santos with the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And the end result is a Bears touchdown. Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Here come the Seahawks and their offense now under veteran head coach Pete Carroll. And they will be led out by their signal caller in his second year in the NFL now. This guy's leadership is so important to how this offense functions. He doesn't shrink from any moments on game day, and everything he does, he does with confidence. He sets the example in practice off the field and is the guy leading everyone out for each possession. They'll run with Walker to begin the drive. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Ball on the 27. Here's second and six. Little bootleg here. Howell. He'll find Metcalf. It'll go down as a gain of six. And that's going to make it third down and less than a yard. We'll see what kind of mindset they have here offensively after giving up the touchdown on the opening drive. And based on our time with them, you know, prior to this game, I feel like they've got a good mindset going in. In fact, the discussion that we had with the coaching staff was, you know, we may give up some points in this game, so our offense has to be ready. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slant, and it's intercepted. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. A few things better than a big man interception. You can always tell right when they get the football, there's that level of excitement and nervousness and also like, what the heck do I do with this thing? <laughs> and you say, no better sight? Well, not for the quarterback who just threw it. It's bad enough to throw a pick, but throw one to the big guy? But you're right about that. Now what do I do with it? But what's fun about it is, you know they're going to be in the film room after this ball game on all their teammates. Maybe I should shift over to offense. I've got skills. What do you think? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I always find myself cheering for them after they intercept it. Unfortunately here, he couldn't make it into the end zone. Now Williams on first and ten. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. Touchdown! Cole Komet. 26 yards and the Bears are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead they've got to be thrilled on the road right now touchdown turnover touchdown and quickly trying to make it 14 to nothing yeah and mentioned it already on the road to be able to go into someone else's house and establish a start like that obviously your confidence rises in a big way and you're putting some doubt in their minds Santos able to tack on the extra point, and that'll make the score 14 to zip. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. After the touchdown, here's the punter Trenton Gill to kick it away. And this taken in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. 
And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So decent size deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words, early on. So they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. He's going to get this complete here to lock it. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. You can almost hear the sigh of relief coming from their sideline and from their point on the field because this has been a tough start for them thus far. A much needed first down there. They needed something good to happen. Plays like that will continue to help them dig out of this hole. Al throwing on first down here. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Tyreek Stevenson picks it off. And they will score a pick six for a Bears touchdown. Charles, it is pretty rare that we see a team build this kind of lead in the opening quarter. And, man, they seem to be clicking on all three phases right there. The defense doing its part with a pick six. And it's absolutely been the definition of a start that you would pick for yourself and for your team, right? And I have a feeling that they just want to stay in this zone. What's truly incredible about this start is they can add on a couple more scores. This one could legitimately be over in the second quarter. Now the point after try for Santos. It's good, and before you know it, it's 21-0. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So how about this for a start? 21-0 here in the first as they kick this one away. Eskridge going to keep this one in the end zone, and they'll start at the 25-yard line. That pick six just a moment ago. Things went from bad to worse. Look up at the scoreboard now. Not looking good here. We'll see if they can put something together on this drive. First and 10. Here's Walker to start the drive. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. They may want to go back to that one. First play of the drive, good for 15 and a first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first quarter, and a lot of teams will just panic, abandon the playbook, and just start firing the ball all over the place. It's way too early for that. Stick to what works for you. Down double digits, and we talked about their game plan being both running and passing there. You're right. They're sticking to the game plan, getting the ground game going. A lot of football left to be played. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Faking the handoff. Howell. It's caught. Lock it. Nine yards. Not quite enough. And they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third down, here's Walker. And good work there in open space. And he's got this all the way down now to the 32. That good for 19 and a first down. Exactly what they needed right there because they needed to use the ground game to take some pressure off because the quarterback's been struggling a little bit.
So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 32-yard line. Now Hal over the middle, finding Smith and Jigba. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger gain. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 21-0, our score after one. Second quarter now from Seattle, and it is the Seahawks with the football here. As they've got it with a first and ten. This will be caught once again by Brown. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch at its second down. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Ball at the 14 for second and five. And once more, Hal back to the air. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why. They look lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. They'll break the huddle and come up on the ninth play of this drive, needing five yards on third down. Out of the gun, Walker with it. And he has the first down before he's tackled at the five. 47 yards rushing for him now, and he's only carried the ball four times. Partner, there are strong running plays, and then there are plays where you simply outclass the defense, and we saw the latter there. They ran straight up the heart of that front for an excellent gain and first down. Simply put, you've got to put up more of a fight defending the middle. Otherwise, this is going to be a long game. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. And going right back to Walker. And I think they stopped him again. They did at the one-yard line. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. Well, I didn't have to stretch for this one. This is four down territory. They've got to get it in with the deficit that they're facing. Absolutely. It's not the fourth quarter, but still, you, I think you, you can't be thinking three here. No, if you do that, you might as well go ahead and fold up on this one, but I don't think they're built like that. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage, after this drive, this close to the goal line, Pete Carroll none too pleased with that last call. He's going to throw out the challenge flag. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. After review of the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. So Pete Carroll, always a guy to trust his instincts, and his instincts were right on that one. Get something together. Let's roll. Let's roll. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and that'll cut the lead to 21 to 7. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown.
So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. And the drive will begin at the 25 as Scott is going to stay in the end zone. And now Chicago getting ready to go as they take the field. So for this offense, Charles, remember drive one made it to the end zone. Drive two resulted in a touchdown as well. Now they'll try to make it three for three. Yeah, and you know, they told us all week that this was the plan and this is what they wanted to execute. But did they really believe it would happen this well, this efficiently? I know they'll take it. And afterwards, they'll say, there is never a doubt in our minds we were going to be successful in this one. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Right back to Swift again on second down. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A good pickup, 17 yards and a bare first down. Interior of that line blocked really well on that run, but also the two tight ends, they block well too. Not only have they stouted the line of scrimmage, with their agility, they can get upfield and hit moving targets like linebackers, defensive backs. They do a really good job helping out the running game. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away, but the bottom line is that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. On the option to give to Swift here. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. 52 yards rushing for him now to this point. This drive is turning to an extended one, and, and the guy carrying the ball, he's becoming more like a body blows guy. Every carry is putting some damage on the defense. So after a while, I'm not too sure how many guys are going to want to run up and tackle him. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. And I feel like my man, Old Mo, momentum might be changing jerseys right now. How about what they just got done? They scored a touchdown on their last drive. Now here's a three and out. Maybe momentum's getting ready to creep to the other sideline. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And this is going to be ruled out, I think, just inside the 20. Yes, it will. Side judge calls it at the 19-yard line. And out now come the Seahawks. A strong showing their last time out. They scored the touchdown, but Charles, they look up, and they're still down double digits, so you feel like just to keep pace, this drive probably needs to end in the end zone as well. Yeah, and I think the best move for them is to not worry about how far they are down on the scoreboard, but to just remember the last drive and how it ended. Go ahead and try and repeat that. Then you can look at the scoreboard and see where this game is. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the 24 now, here's second and five. They'll give it up to the big man, Walker, and he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. They'll say no gain on the play there, and now it'll be third down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Again, it's Walker. And this won't do it. He needed six. He only got halfway there. Well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no gain. The Seahawks will call on Michael Dixon on fourth down to punt this one away. On oh, the return is Jones. 
It's a 45-yard punt, but a decent return there of nine yards. And they will take over first and 10. Well, let's shine the spotlight on the former Georgia Bulldog, DeAndre Swift, who's set to begin this next drive. And it may just be the second quarter, but he's in his own well on his way to eclipsing that 100-yard mark. And when a back has a game, as we're witnessing right now, his name's going to be in the books, but it's really a collective deal, isn't it? Because that the means he's getting plenty of blocking, a lot of help from his teammates, but he's making the most of it. Yeah, he's made the most of it to this point. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he's able to get this to the 40-yard line before he's out of bounds. Good yardage as he rumbles for 24 and a first. I know that play went to the left side, and that's what it was designed to do, an outside handoff there. But how about the whole offensive line being involved? Seal the left side where the play was going, where they call play side. But how about on the back side? Just taking care of business to make sure no one can get there and disrupt it. Is the biggest key the left tackle? Without a doubt. Control that edge. Get out there. You want that left tackle. If you bring your tight end over there, either way, control the edge of the line of scrimmage. You've got a chance to rumble. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. To throw again, Williams. Pressure comes, he's taken down by the Seahawk defense. Leonard Williams, the former number six overall pick, got the sack that time. Well, that's what they have to do more of defensively, not just getting sacks, but they have to keep getting in his face, not let him get his feet set and deliver. He's been carving them up previously. Yeah, already has a couple of touchdown passes. About time they put a few grass stains on that jersey. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. If you're looking for glory, looking to get your name in the headlines, you do not want to play nose tackle. But how about what we just saw there? The ability to hold people up, take on extra blocks, and actually slip them and make a tackle on that play. That's big time. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Now the ball now going back over the Seattle Seahawks offense. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, and this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. Hal to the air on first and ten. This complete to Lockett. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half, but I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball, and what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Now Hal, throw out wide to Walker. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Here now, second and four. Back to throw, Howell. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. Just a little beyond the reach there of his receiver. That's probably one he wishes he had back. He wishes it had been seven on seven in practice or maybe even routes versus air because that's a completion he makes, what, 9.9 .9 times out of 10? Just missed that one. Al, he'll look to throw it. He lets it fly for Lockett. And unable to connect, incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's gonna bring up fourth down. Trying to get something positive to happen here before the break, and they sure need it. They went for the big one, but it winds up incomplete. Here's Michael Dixon now to punt. 
First kick, 47. This one looks good as well. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return, and that will come the offense as they take over. Now the Bears going to take over now late in this first half. Already enjoying a two-score lead here late in the second quarter. Not a ton of time left. We'll see if they can work this at least into field goal range and try to get three to add on even more to their lead. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Williams. Open man is Komet, the tight end. So eight yards on the completion there, and that'll bring up a second down in just a couple. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Here's Williams. A final shot before break. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. So we reach halftime with the visiting Bears out on top here. As we send you cross country to Orlando, Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Back to you guys in a bit. But first, we welcome everyone to our EA Sports halftime report. The highlights are fairly one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference here at the break. But I wouldn't call this one over just yet. I think there could still be some fireworks yet to come. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be brought down right on the chalk of the 20. The Seahawk offense set to go to begin this third quarter. And right out of the gate they face what you think could be a pretty important drive. I would say so. You know, they're down two scores. That's not the end of the world. It wasn't the strongest of first halves, but for them to start calling back, they've got to start putting a little pressure on that defense, start cutting into this deficit. You can't have three and outs and expect to get that done. They'll throw on first down. Here's Hal. And he'll go down. The Bears get there for the sack. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. I'd say it's not panic time yet, but let's be honest about it. Empty possession here, not what you're looking for when you're down a couple of scores. Absolutely not. Trying to start the second half off on the right foot. Unfortunately, going to get the ball up. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Powell out of the shotgun. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. Now that's the way to start the second half. Back-to-back -back sacks. Whatever the halftime speech was, I hope they recorded it. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Up the middle they run. It's Walker. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. For a running back, that's kind of depressing, right? You get all that yardage, but still no first down. Well, it was a mile maybe a mile and a half to the first down mark. Yeah. So he did all he could to get there. 
a little disappointing at the end, but boy, they gave it a great effort, didn't they? Can't give him a little respect for that, don't you? And he really helped his yards per carry average, that's for sure. Yeah, quietly, he'll take that. So a change of possession here on the punt. So here are the Bears now as they get set for their first possession of the second half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. On the option to give to Swift here. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. But that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. Williams to throw on second down. For Keenan Allen, that's complete. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. Williams now on first down. And there's a short throw. It's caught by Kemet. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. From the 46, here's second down and three. On the option to give to Swift here. And he'll get it down here to the 43. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Sometimes I get almost mesmerized watching these runners who have great vision. You know, those eyes that carry their feet to open spaces, make people miss. I just love watching those guys go to work. Now Williams throwing on first down. He's got the connection to Moore. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. And we've got movement. I think this is against the Bears here. Let's find out. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. Now a play fake here on first down. He finds his target, Allen. And he'll be out of bounds about a half to a full yard shy of the five. Add the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field, and just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Looking to throw. Williams. This will be caught at about the five. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Herbert will score. Touchdown, Chicago. And maybe that's the magic touch right there. They didn't use him at all in the first half, at least running the football. But here they entrust him with some work down in the red zone, and he responds. One carry, one touchdown. Santos now to add the PAT. He knocks it through. It's 28-7. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run.
Well, after the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And coming out of the end zone, D. Eskridge. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and 10. And Howe will throw it. Left side complete to lock it. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. Now second and seven from the 23. On the give, it's Walker. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. 86 yards for him on the ground now. He has been a tough man to bring down all night. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quitting this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Throwing here, Howell. This one into the hands of Metcalf. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and that'll bring up second down. Here's Hal. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Kyler Gordon picks it off. Inside the 10, and they will score a pick six for a Bears touchdown. Well, if there was any thought that this thing might turn around for this offense in the second half, I think those thoughts pretty well dashed after that interception return there. It just has not been a good outing for this unit whatsoever. There's no other way to say it. They've been overmatched, haven't performed to the level that they've needed, and that throw there is just going to contribute to this game getting out of hand. Now the point after try for Santos. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. The Seahawks offense now, they get ready to come back onto the field. Well, we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one-score game as we go into it, watching this blowout, it's, let's just say it's been unusual. Ball on the 28-yard line. Here's second down at a yard. Sticking with Walker on second down. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. 
Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. And Brandon, you know that expression? He just does what he does. <laughs> it sounds trite, doesn't it? But in this case, it's perfectly apt. This is one of the better runners in the NFL. And all he does is just find avenues, find ways to pick up key first downs and big runs. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Seattle, Washington. So first and 10 now from the 30. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. As a defensive back, you have some weapons at your disposal that we don't often talk about. And you can read the receiver's eyes, you can read his hands, and you know that the arrival of the ball is imminent, and that allows you to make a play on it and oftentimes knock it away. Here's Hal to throw on second down. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. The offense on third down tonight, they've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and ten. Now yet another incompletion here as they fail to connect on third. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. Pete Carroll rolled the dice, but it didn't work out. And the Bears are going to get the football back, and they're going to get it in great field position. Well, that's another mistake there on the drop pass on fourth, and we've seen him do things like this all game. It's not hard to figure out why they're down by that deficit. They haven't made plays that are going to keep them in the game or win the game all game long. That's another example right there. It all boils down at the end of it to execution. Either you make the play or you don't. Historically, this is such a tough, loud venue, but you can hear a pin drop right now. A lot of fans long gone, not used to seeing a lopsided score like this. He'll get about six there as he takes this one down to the 24-yard line. Now, I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big runner and pound away and try and finish off a game. Now a dump off here complete. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Well, they have been unstoppable this afternoon, Charles. They just went after them from the start and pass plays like we just saw. They're continuing their dominance here despite the big lead in the fourth quarter. And that they have in every way. And plays like that across all phases of the game, they've just been effortless for them in this one. And that's what's helped them build such a large lead and allowed them to smile as this game continues. Now that sends them two yards in the wrong direction and leads to second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. Looking to throw on second down, Williams. A CD, they're up big, but they're still passing it. I mean, this is an offense that's had a lot of success in this game, and it seems like they're just having fun out there. And it does feel like there's been a shift out there, doesn't it, partner? Listen, if you're up, you can continue to do what you want to do. It's up to the other okay, team to make right? you change how you do things. They'll continue to throw it around until stopped. They'll look to throw on third and goal. This is caught. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. Nice completion, nice gain. Great tackle. Really good tackle. Kept him in bounds, kept things going. What do you do here? That's the question. Let's see what they do. 
The offense is going to stay out there. We'll see what the play call is. They need to find the right one here on fourth and goal. They'll try it now with Swift. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Chicago. DeAndre Swift. A touchdown run there from a yard out. And the Bears have sewn this one up as they add to their lead here in the fourth. Santos now to add the PAT. And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So the drive there took six plays. And it culminates in a touchdown for Chicago. After the touchdown, here's the punter, Trenton Gill, to kick it away. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And, Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, okay, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This, they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. Now how? Yeah, he's got Smith and Jigba. And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. A big pickup of 38. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. Al throwing on first down here. Open man, that's Noah Fant, the tight end. This will be a gain of about eight to the 27-yard line. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that will pull you out of that spot that they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. That incompletion brings us one snap closer to the end of this one. Maybe mercifully, partner. And let's face it, though, no surprise, they're still flinging it around. They have pride, too. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. He'll find Metcalf. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they get five there on third and two. They've been moving the ball well, but this drive was in danger of stalling out. Fortunately, this is a nice throw here, and they're able to pick up a new set of downs. Walker now on first and 10. And a couple of yards as they move it from the 21 to the 19. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. Second and eight coming from the 19. Sticking with Walker on second down. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. Makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. Hal throwing on third down here. Under pressure, and he'll go down back at the 26-yard line. 
That was a corner blitz, and it was Kyler Gordon getting in there for the sack. Well, someone is certainly having a big game, and while that sack doesn't quite have the splash of his pick six from earlier, you know he's thrilled to be making big plays during a great individual effort today. Now here's Jason Myers. He gets set for the Seahawk field goal. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. Myers' kick is good. Back now on EA Sports as the kick teams are out here following the two-minute warning. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. And up to about the 26-yard line, just across the 25. Another drive coming up for this Chicago offense. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. left side complete to Keenan Allen and they get him down but not before he takes it across the 40 yard line that play going for 16 yards to start the drive first down <laughs> well partner nothing but praise for me for this offense they have been tremendous all night long they knew what they had to do to unlock the defense and let's face it this has been a master class in offensive football that we've been here to witness they will run straight ahead with Swift and he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. So they cite the right guard this time with a holding penalty. And so many different assignments you could have at that position. And sometimes you might just be a step too late and have to grab and hold on. They run out of the gun with Swift. And this winds up a pickup of two, maybe two and a half to about the 39. I know that speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Behind the chain, second and 13. They'll stay on the ground with Swift. Three yards is the pickup, but it leaves them still needing 11 here on third down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Well, partner, under the lights in primetime, this offense, they gave the nation quite a show, putting up that many points to come away with what will certainly be a memorable win for them. And, Brandon, I think it's as simple as this. Some players, some teams, they're just meant for the big stage. And when they get a chance to play in this type of atmosphere where all eyes are on them and all the lights are shining brightly, they show up and they show out. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. From Seattle, so long, everybody.